What I want to do is I want to share some of my experiences of my life. You guys mind if I take a little bit of time to share my life with you? Awesome, awesome. All right. So, like I said, my name is Adrian Boisel. I'm actually born and raised here in Sacramento, California. I've been here my whole life. Been here my whole life. This is me at about seven or eight years old, trying to show off and be a pro at everything. Uh, believe it or not, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. How many of you here are entrepreneurs? Raise a show of hands. Pretty much everybody. So I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I was playing business instead of playing house as a little kid. Something I just, it's in my bones. My grandfather was an entrepreneur, my dad's an entrepreneur. Just something that I can't change, it's just who I am. I've tried to have jobs over the years, just never worked out, and for me, being an entrepreneur is really gives me the freedom, the time with my family, with my friends to be able to do and express myself as I please and not be controlled by the nine to five and the commute and all those things. So as an entrepreneur, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it up for anything. It's, it's really the number one thing uh, that, that is my passion. It's my number one passion. Every single day I wake up and I just get super pumped up to go out there and help small business owners. Um, when I grew up in Sacramento, I didn't have it easy. My grandmother raised me for the first four years of my life, my grandmother and my grandfather. My grandfather unfortunately passed away and uh, it was really devastating right in front of me. And it was really hard. So that was kind of a really early lesson in, in life and kind of woke me up and uh, kind of gave me that, that clarity when you kind of come to as a little kid and you start realizing the things around you and you're not just in la la land. And uh, really helped me start seeing things a little clearly and uh, he's just he was a really important part of my life and then I ended up living with my dad and it was really hard my dad wasn't the kind of person that was really around much so I spent a lot of time by myself writing little business ideas and business plans because my grandfather just planted that in me at such a young age and it's just something that uh, I don't think it'll, it'll ever go away um, so the big thing uh, that happened was at about 10 years old I went back to live with my grandma and uh, she kind of took me under her wing and just started really teaching me a lot of the lessons that I hadn't gotten from anybody else. How to treat people, giving to, giving to people first, really serving people before asking for something. She said, give and don't expect anything in return. If they don't give anything in return, then that's okay. But you need to give to people, share your heart, share your passion, share what you love, be kind, have manners. And that was really one of the big things that people used to say to me all the time. I remember as a kid growing up all the time, wow, he's got such great manners, holding the door open for people, opening the car door for my mom, things like that. It's, it's just really important. It kind of shaped who I am. So I give her a lot of my credit. She's not unfortunately here, but I give her a lot of the credit for who I am today. She really crafted me as a human being um, and really shaped some of the, the beliefs and, the, and the, the values that I have today. So very, very important to me. Um, in 2005, I was actually working, and actually working a job, selling cars, starting to get my sales experience in. I was reading books, just started reading Napoleon Hill. Anybody read Think and Grow Rich? Great book, right? That really set me on a path to change my life and really gave me the confidence that I needed to become an entrepreneur and leave my nine to five. It was actually like nine to nine or nine to 11 sometimes of the car business. Any car guys in here or car gals? Yeah, so you know, bell to bell, seven days a week, two days on, and then you have to work those two days because they usually are on a weekend. And uh, it was just, it wasn't the right thing for me. So I had a little side business where I was designing nightclub flyers. I was really young at the time, 18 years old, and I was spending a lot of time partying, doing a lot of the things that I shouldn't be, do, be doing, living the lifestyle that I shouldn't have been living, going to nightclubs, going to bars, even though I was 18. And uh, so I, I got in some circles with people and they asked me to design. They knew I was an artist and started designing flyers like this. And uh, I really found a knack for it. I started getting better and better and better. My first flyer, which I didn't include here because it'd be really, really embarrassing. Uh, it was all black and white and I think I used paint to do it. And then my little brother came up to me and he's like, hey man, uh, have you ever heard of Photoshop? And I was like, Photoshop, what's that? And that changed everything. I mean, going from paint to Photoshop, I mean, come on, totally different worlds. So I started designing these flyers, and uh, my mentor, Larry, who I mentioned yesterday, uh, was actually the owner of one of the clubs. I didn't put his flyer up here, but he started paying me on a pretty consistent basis to produce flyers. And after about a year of really following his advice and listening to his encouragements and him building me up, and you know, he knew me, I shared my whole life story and everything that happened to me, all the goods and the bads and everything, and he was really... Uh, focused on, on helping me become better because he had come from a place where he had a broken home as well. And that's really a big calling for me now in my life is restoring broken families and helping at-risk youth. So 
He took me under his wing, really showed me the ropes, and gave me the confidence, some of the skills, and the resources to start really building myself up and, and feeling like a titan. That's actually another talk that I do, of uh, feeling like a titan. Um, so that's, that's where it started, as I started doing nightlife flyers and club flyers. And then uh, in 2006, uh, the economy started to crash. I was, because I was doing this on the side, but I still had a full-time business. I had left the car business and actually went to the home loan industry. And if any of you guys know the home loan industry in 2006, the loans disappeared, no one was lending anymore, all ABC Bank, all these places disappeared, and it was really hard to try to keep bringing in revenue. So my income dried up, and when your income dries up and you have bills, you got car payments, you got insurance, and you have to make choice, okay, what do I pay? Well, I happened to let my insurance go, and I made a poor decision one day when I got in an accident. I asked my dad, what do I do? I don't have insurance anymore, it lapsed. And he's like, oh, let me give you some advice. Worst thing I could have ever done. I took some advice from my dad and ended up doing 30 days. Spent 30 days in jail in Placer County. And I really looked at my life, how I had been living, where I had been living, and, and uh, the choices I had been making, people I had surrounded myself with. And I had some good people. I had Larry and a few other people that were from, uh, you know, that were more prominent, that had good careers, that had been around a long time. And so I really decided, I remember standing outside of his, his bar at the end of the day and looking at the back patio as I was helping him hanging up there, I'm like, dude, what do I do? How am I going to come back from this? This is a huge, devastating blow. I didn't get paid any money or anything like that, so it was just a little little 30-day stint. I had to just pay, pay my dues, and uh, I did my 30 days, but he's like, dude, don't let this ever happen again. Use this as a lesson and move forward with the rest of your life. This isn't going to define your future. You still have a future. Don't let this define you, but use this time that you have to actually make something of yourself, to do something different. You have a talent, you have a gift, you have design abilities, you have passion. Use that. A lot of people need your help. Small business owners like me, people who are trying to make a way in, their, in the business world, who are trying to follow their dreams and do exactly what I was trying to do. So what I decided to do while I was in there, I spent those 30 days every single day and I wrote my entire business plan, the whole thing. And I didn't really overcomplicate it. It's really easy. You could go look up online how to write a business plan and it would take... You could take hours researching it, but all that's going to do is fill your head with so much information, it's going to overwhelm you, and you're not even going to know where to start. It really doesn't need to be that complicated. So, so I got out, and this is what I was sleeping on. In fact, when I first started hanging out with my, my now wife, uh, she hung out with me and came to my office. I had a little tiny little office. It was probably 100 square feet, no windows, just a door, and that in there, and then a desk. And I sat in there for like 90 days and just grinded it out, called as many people as I could. And what I did is I actually stuck to my business plan. I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I called, I called hundreds of people a week, probably four to 500 people a week. And I knew that all I needed to do was generate three to four sales every single day. Really important. It's all I needed to do. So I stuck to that plan, which is the first point. A plan. you got to have a plan. There's a quote that I really like. It's something I've, uh, I've said on my radio show a few times, is an idiot, can, an idiot with a plan can beat a genius without one. If you have a plan and you know the roadmap of where you're going, you can win. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. So what I want you to do first is I want you to write down your plan. And I want you to keep it simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. You need to know who you're going to talk to every day, how, or how many people you're going to talk to. You need to know who you're talking to, if it's a small business owner, if it's an engineering firm, if you're going after a specific industry, or if you're consumers. Who is your consumer? Is it men? Is it women? You want to get specific in those areas because you want to be speaking their language. You want to be figuring out what their problems are. It's very, very important. So that's the who, the what, and the how. So the who is, again, who are we speaking to? Who is the, who, what, who is the ideal customer for you. Obviously, it's not somebody that's going to be cheap. It's not somebody, and maybe it is. Maybe you're selling volume and you just want to crank out a ton of, ton of product if you have a product business. Maybe that's, that's the goal. Um, but for me, I wanted to sell value of what I was providing. I was also offering an amazing graphic design service that I knew that these small business owners weren't, weren't going to get anywhere else. So it was really, really important. The what is these designers or these home, uh, business owners, they were small business owners, handymen, a little contractors, nightclubs. I still had a consistent base of nightclubs that I was doing flyers for. And next thing you know, after about 90 days, I pretty much had almost every single nightclub and bar in Sacramento I was doing their flyers for. I was printing over 200 flyers a month, 200 orders of flyers a month, uh, doing about almost 500 orders of business cards every month. It was very fast momentum. And 
it was really it was really fun. It was a really good experience. But the cool thing that I did, and this is the how, is a lot of these people felt lost. They didn't know how to start, how to create their marketing piece, what it needed to look like. They didn't even have a brand. They're just like, well, I'm a handyman. I don't know. You know, I I, I do local deliveries or whatever the service was. They they didn't know how to position and brand themselves. And that was something that I happened to be very good at, something I had been doing as a hobby for years, helped my dad create his brands, helped my family, other family members create their brands, something I really enjoyed doing. So I was like, well, I can do that for you. So I started going to their offices. I started inviting them to my little hole in the wall office with my futon couch, all of those things. So it was, it was a very powerful experience to be able to sit side by side with these people and actually hear their stories and hear their passions. And it wasn't anything about me. I wasn't there for me. I was there for them. I was present in the moment for them. And that's another big thing that you guys have to do. If you're going to build relationships, which sales is relationships. And at the very beginning of the presentation, it says sales is one of the keys to your business success. If you're not selling, that's typically why businesses fail. It's one of the most common reasons. So you really have to be there focused on them, on serving them, uh, solving their problems and figuring out what it is that they need. Very, very important. So your brand strategy, this is a big one. You gotta have a brand strategy, it's, it's essential. So for a lot of people that are just starting out, your brand is you, you don't have a whole team of people. How many people are just like a single person, uh, small business? Raise your hand. Okay, so we got a few of you. How many people have like uh, two to 10 employees? Nice, how about 10 to 50? Just wanna get a feel for the room, nice, okay. So if you have a small business, one to, one to two people, you are your brand. You're the face of the company. You're the one that's going out there building the relationships with people. And relationships are like currency. It's better than currency. It's better than money. If you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship, hey, Jay, you're actually going to be able to leverage that relationship. There's people that he's been able to send me since our relationship. Raul, I mean, my relationship with Raul, I started as just helping him doing some event marketing for this thing. Next thing you know, we're here at William Jessup University. I'm here on stage and I'm speaking to you guys about my passion. Can we make some noise? Isn't that amazing? That's the power of relationships. It's super powerful. So you gotta build authentic relationships. You need to be transparent. You need to be reliable. So if you say you're gonna do something, do it. Under promise and over deliver. It's very, very important. Because as soon as you start under delivering for people and making these huge promises and not fulfilling it, you're gonna lose all your credibility. And all that work you did to put that relationship together and really build that relationship, an authentic relationship, is gonna go to, go to junk. It's gonna go in the dirt. It's in the trash, in the toilet. So it's really important to build those authentic relationships. So another 90 days later, I had worked my freaking tail off. And I'm talking like, I was getting up in the morning at six o'clock. I was by myself every day. I didn't really have a whole lot to do. I just was like, I'm going to stick to my plan and work as many hours a day as I can. My competitors are working 9 to 5. I'm going to work 9 to freaking 2 o'clock in the morning. Have any night owls in the room? Yeah? How about you early risers? We got some early risers? Yeah, I don't know what that's about. I can't, I can't hang with that. My wife doesn't either. She's not about that life. So I love staying up till 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, being creative, designing. It's just my personality. I research. I write content. Do a lot of my stuff at late at night. So that's what I was doing. I was waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and sometimes I'd go to, I'd pull 24-hour shifts. I'd go full 24 hours. I was so passionate, so excited, and that was really what propelled California and design and printing right there in Citrus Heights. That's what propelled that company so quickly. Is I had so much passion, so much excitement. I was like, dude, how can I help you, man? I will create you the best business cards you've ever seen. They're like, what, really? I'm like, sit down, watch, I'll do it. 30 minutes later, they're walking away with the nicest business cards they've ever seen. I'm sending it off to the printer. Two days later, they had the nicest business cards they've ever had in their hand. I was under-promising and over-delivering every time, and I did that over and over and over again. But I also set up systems for myself. It was really important. Every single person I talked to, I said, hey, you know how you could really help me? I need three referrals. Who are three other business owners, three friends? You know three business owners. Can you write them down? I'll give them a call. I'll take care of them just like I took care of you. I've built that credibility. I've built that trust. It's very important. Got to build that trust. So I was getting, from every customer I brought, I would get two to three customers. It was powerful. And so I went from zero to 3,000 customers in like two and a half years. It was huge. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. It was amazing. So this is my humble little shop. I actually uh, worked a deal with the landlord. Uh, I just, like, again, my passion. I was really just interested in building a relationship with the guy. I'm like, man, he owns a building. I'd love to get into commercial real estate. This is so cool. I was just genuinely interested in him. Of course, I was there for me because I wanted a building of my own and I'd been working out of a little hole in the wall, but I was interested in getting my own space. So 
I talk to him, and he's like, hey, man, I need first month, I need last month, I need your, your deposit, I need all these things. It's going to be like uh, $5,000. And I'm like, dude, I don't got $5,000. I'm working my butt off. I got to buy furniture. I got to remodel the place. I got to do all these things. Man, this is above my budget. Is there anything you can do to help me out? Just being honest and genuine and transparent with him. Like, I got some money, but I, I need to use it to get this place looking nice. He's like, this is what I'll do. That $750 you're going to pay me as a deposit, just throw it on to the first month's rent, throw it on to the second month's rent, throw it on the third, month, third month's rent. I like you. See your portfolio. You're super passionate. You're young. You're hungry. I'd love to give you the opportunity. And that was a game changer. I was like, man, that's the kind of guy that I want to be. Those are the opportunities I want to give people. And he allowed me to do that. It was really, really powerful. I got into my space, and next thing you know, companies like Domco, AJ's, all these places started calling me, hitting me up, and I had a retail front. I had some big signs outside. I was able to take that money, put it into really great signage. I found a little college person that was looking for some extra work, and I'm like, okay, if I could just give her, you know, 10 bucks an hour, and I stand her out there on the street with a little sign that we can make for, you know, 10 bucks an hour, I'll get people coming through the door. Bam, my first day, 500 bucks. Bam, my, first, my second day, 500 bucks. My third day, 500 bucks. I'm like, wow, this sign shaker stuff really works. I wasn't doing that with any advertising dollars. Just to show hands, you guys that are business owners, how many of you would like to advertise or to market your business without spending a dollar on advertising and make six figures? Right? That would be huge. That's what I did. I didn't have the money to spend on advertising at the time, and I really didn't know a whole lot about advertising. I hadn't gone down that road, and I do now. Um, you know, I do the digital marketing, advertising, Facebook, Google ads, all that stuff, but I didn't really know much about advertising, so I was like, man, I just got to go out there and hit the streets, meet people, and start conversations. That's all it was. It was start conversations and meet as many people as I can, so I was out there all the time, going to the bars, hey, who are you? Hey, who are you? Nice to meet you. And just handing out my cards and just trying to really build myself in the community as, hey, this guy is the go-to guy for printing and design. And as you can see here, I'll show you, just a couple years later, this was my location. We actually remodeled the building. I redid my signage, and I started working and improving on my brand. It's really important to evolve your brand. I changed my colors. I made them bright. I made them cheery. You saw those original ones. It was black and white and dull. I, I really wanted to show color. I wanted to show life. I really wanted to grab people's attention. So I tinted the windows and put some graphics on the windows, all of that. So it was really important for me to keep investing into my business, into my brand. It was really huge. So it was part of my, part of my plan that I had in there is how are you going to continue to invest? What are the stages and steps that you want to go through? So at this point in 2010, uh, I had really turned my life around. At this point, I was already making more than six figures. Uh, I was probably doing about $200,000, $250,000 a year just out of a tiny little print shop. And one of the guys that worked for me invited me to church, and he's like, hey, man, are you a Christian or, you know, you believe in God? I'm like, yeah, I believe in God, but you go to church? Nah, nah, that's not my thing, man. I'm not about that. But I really felt a pull, and I felt a calling, so I decided to go to church, and within 30 days, uh, I heard a pastor speak, and uh, my life had just come so far in just, just a short amount of time. I just had an incredible amount of gratitude and, and joy, and there was things from my past uh, that I had heard from some of the sermons that I just knew I needed to let go. I needed to forgive myself for the mistakes that I had made and the things that I had done and the people I had done wrong and the, and the decisions that I had made. So I decided to, uh, to give my life to Jesus. Any, any Jesus fans in here? That was a life, that was a life-changing experience. Um, the cool thing about that is I went in this little soft tub and you can see here, this is actually my grandmother next to me. I went in the soft tub, and uh, man, they dunked me under that water, and I came up, and it was just like, boom. I mean, I was just overwhelmed with joy. I mean, I felt like the whole world was just lifted off my shoulders, and I, I was free to just run as fast as I can. And if I thought I had momentum before, man, my momentum exploded. And it was just, it was an incredible experience. So the funny thing is about part of this story is my grandma was so moved by what had happened and how she seen me react to being baptized and brought back up and just brought to tears. She, in her clothes, in her makeup, and this is the woman that raised me, she said, I want to get baptized too. And went straight in the water and gave her life to Jesus. That was a huge win. That was more, that was, to me, that was a bigger win than me going underwater. It was huge. Boom. Skip forward just a few months. Things had continued to explode. This is in downtown Sacramento. This is my second retail location. It was 3,000 square feet. By this time, I had over four, no, five employees working for me. I had a print guy. I had a sign guy. I had a main graphic designer. I had a programmer. And then I had an admin person running the shop. In fact, I think I have a couple more photos. But I had built a team. 
It's really, really important. You've got to build a team. And that's actually going to be my, one of my points. So here's the interior shot. I remodeled the whole building, put my heart and soul into it. I had really evolved my brand. I started making T-shirts. And you can see here my little offer, $99 for business cards. Comes with the design, comes with the print, the whole deal. It was, I made an irresistible offer. That's really what I thought. Was, Man, people are getting ripped off. They're going to local print shops, spending 150 200 bucks for 500 cards. This is insane. People need, they need the opportunity to, to bootstrap their business like I did, is do it for as little as possible. So I started passing that savings along to them. It really helped me. It was huge. So making... Six figures in six months. A lot of people complicate the process, and it's not that complicated. So what I want you guys to do is stop overthinking it. It's just a numbers game, and you got to keep it simple. If you want to make six figures in six months, sell, two, sell a $200 product to 500 people, that's only three a day for six months. 100 grand. How many people here just are currently making $100,000 or more? How many people would love to make $100,000 in six months? Because some people don't like money. <laughs> Sell a $500 product to 200 people. That's one a day. That's going out, meeting people, introducing yourself, going to events, anywhere you can get your name out there, anywhere you can put your business card on the, on the cork boards, wherever you go. You put your brand, you put your name, you put what you do everywhere, and you start, start selling and sharing your story. And selling is just building relationships for me. It's not like trying to sell you something that you don't want. Nobody wants to buy something that someone is pushing on them. you got to pull the rope, not push it. So you want to lead them to what it is. Like I said to, to Jay, I will make you, or I think it was Bill here, I will make you the nicest set of business cards you've ever had. That was a real commitment. And they walked out that day, an hour after, after they had just met me, with an incredible design that they, all of a sudden they had a brand. It was incredible. So... Next one here, sell a $1,000 product to 100 people. That's only 2.4 people per day. That's about what I started with. As I was selling about two to three people every single day, I was calling about 100 to 200 people a day consistently every single day. Regardless of how much business I had, I would carve out the time to prospect and meet new people. And that's a really good thing I'd love you guys to write down. Carve out time every single day to prospect. Prospecting is probably one of the things that people don't enjoy the most about their business, and that's why their sales funnels, their funnels, their, their business funnels dry up. They don't have any business, and then they have to go and scramble, and that's why you see these huge ups and downs of businesses. Oh, I gotta scramble, I gotta make some money, and they go and meet a bunch of people, do a bunch of activities, and they get a bunch of business, and they focus on making that business come in and, and doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then they have to go back, oh wait, I gotta bring more business in again, and it's that cycle, that roller coaster that you gotta stop. So in order to do that, you need to carve out time every single day or at least a couple times a week to prospect. Be consistent about it, it's very important. You guys enjoying this so far? Yeah. Awesome. So step two, you need to take massive action on that plan every single day. Take that plan with you. I, st I have that original California printing plan. I have it in my little storage box. I saw it the other day when I was cleaning and organizing. I still have that same plan of how many people I was gonna talk to, who I was helping, what I was offering, all of those things. I, I kept. I still keep that, and I have one of those today as well. So you got to stick to your plan, um, and you got to be real. You got to be genuine. You got to be transparent, like I talked about. And then what you really want to do is the whole cool thing about California printing is I brought them into my re retail location. Unlike an Office Depot or any of these other places, you can't actually sit down with somebody and say, "Hey, what is it that you do?" What is it the value that you offer? Because I had a lot of experience at that point, even after just six months. Hey, what is it that you offer that is really helping people and really getting to the core? Because a lot of people just need clarity. How many people here could just use some clarity? Yeah. So a lot of people just need clarity. So when my whole goal was is I wanted to deliver an experience. Hey, sit down, man. We're going to make this a lot easier than it needs to be. We're going to spend a half an hour together. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, and we're going to design you some amazing business cards. They're like, okay, or some, an amazing brochure or an amazing sign or amazing, eventually, websites. So it was, really, it was really fun to do that. And I delivered an experience by really ex speaking to people and caring about what their passion was. And as they were sitting there, this is cool, as they were sitting there with me, I would say out of the, the 10 people that were there, eight of them would literally pick up the phone. Man, before I even asked for a referral, man, I'm sitting here with this guy in, Rose, or in Citrus Heights, and he literally just designed my business cards in front of me and created my brand and my logo and did everything as I've been sitting here. This is, this is incredible. They're like, oh, where are you at? And he's like, California Printing. Boom. I didn't even ask him for a referral yet. He's already speak, they're already talking about me, sharing my business, and, and promoting for me, word of mouth. That's called social currency. 
It's super powerful. Three ways to bring in sales without spending a dime in advertising. I didn't spend a dime ever on California printing for advertising. Didn't do any advertising. It was all organic, all word of mouth. Um, I had some flyers and some stuff I'd give out, business cards, things like that, but I didn't spend any money online or doing any advertising at the time. So these are the big ones. You want to write these down. Referrals, like I said, create in your, in your daily business operations, whether you're business to business or business to consumer, create some sort of system that incentivizes them to refer their friends, to refer their colleagues, to refend, refer anybody that they have that you know that could use this service. Same thing like I did yesterday with you guys when you were leaving here. Hey, bring a friend with you. We just want to fill the room. We want to get as many people here as possible. We want more people to learn, more people to grow. We're going to have an amazing day full of just incredible knowledge. So referrals are powerful. Build that into your system. It's huge. And then community groups. There's networking groups. There's places like Meetup. Uh, there's events like this. And what I want to do is I want you guys to give yourself a big round of applause for coming out here. <laughs> what, you, what you guys did is you guys made an investment in yourselves. And it's not just about the money that you paid to get here. It's about the time. You guys have spent the last two days. You're going to spend two days here investing your time to learn, to grow. And that's huge. That's a, that's a business success principle that a lot of people don't even stick to. They don't go to conferences. They might watch a YouTube video here and there, but they're not being consistent. So props to you guys for actually coming out here, investing your time, and really investing in, in being here and, and paying attention. The third one is just calling people. I think a lot of people just... A lot of people don't answer their phones anymore, so it's really difficult, but you can leave a voicemail, you can send text messages. I don't know if you know this, but text messages, the open rate within the first five minutes is like 97%. Emails can't do that. Social media isn't that powerful. Text messages is one of the most powerful tools you have. It costs you nothing. You put their number in your cell phone, send them a text, hey, and don't make it salesy. Like, again, just make it an authentic relationship. Have fun with it. Hey, how you doing today? Just wanted to chat with you. If you got 10 minutes, I, have a, I just had a quick question. Just whatever it is, start a conversation. Say, hey, good morning. That's the best conversations for me that I have with clients is, hey, good morning. Happy Monday. What you got going on today? Is there anything I can do to help you? Just serving people. That's the really, he's, he's serve your way to success. That's my friend Manny says. So those are huge. Referrals, community groups, call people, networking groups. There's lots of ways for you to get connected. Chambers of commerce. There's so many ways for you to get around community and build a community and do those types of things. So step two is grow. This is really important. For me, a lot of my time, besides the prospecting and then dealing with the clients from the nine to five, after hours when I left, my day wasn't done. I spent time continuing to grow. I knew that you know, designing business cards and designing flyers was fun, and I love being creative and doing my artistic thing, but I really needed to step my game up and start learning more, so I started studying. I watched tutorials on YouTube and PSD Tuts and started calling people who were, who were mentors and taking online courses. I really started pushing myself to grow, to learn, and actually become the best. I wanted to be the best in my industry. I wanted to be the best on a bike. I wanted to be the best Everything in my life, I go 100%. Not 99%, but I go 100%. And so I was going to dedicate myself consistently on a day in and day out to keep learning, keep growing, keep practicing. And sitting side by side with somebody and not having that back and forth delay of like sending emails or picking up the phone and calling and having just that one-on-one -on -one relationship and connection of hearing what they're passionate about was really huge. It was like rocket fuel. It was incredible. Your team. So as you start scaling, as you saw, I grew from just me by myself to an admin to an extra designer because I was so busy. The next thing you know, I had a team of eight people making signs and doing printing and cutting and all these different things. I had to start delegating my thing, things for myself because I couldn't handle everything. You can't wear that many hats. So once you start getting so much business, you start hitting those six-figure monthly deals, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars a month. You need to start delegating the things that you don't enjoy doing. It's too many people. How many of you guys feel like you, the business that you have, you're stuck in it and you're, you're basically an employee to your own company? Raise your hand. Yeah. I was, I was doing the same thing. So I had a mentor that came to me and he said, look, man, you're super talented, but you're doing all of it. You're wearing way too many hats and you're spreading yourself too thin. You're going to burn out. You can't keep up. So I was like, all right. So I started posting ads on Craigslist, started posting on job posting sites, and I was like, I really got to start focusing on finding the right people. And that was pr probably one of the hardest things as a business owner is finding the right people, the right employees that are a good fit for me. So those relationships were really hard. Uh, but I eventually learned, I got some mentorship, I did some coaching there, and it really helped me. Uh, the last one here for step three is client relationships. Again, those referrals, it's building those authentic relationships, connecting with people, calling people, 
uh, going to events, and just serving. That's, that's a huge deal. And this one is one of my favorites here. Money flows. I put this together. Money flows when passion shows. My level of passion was so high that it was infectious. People got to it, and they were like, man, I love just being around you. I had people coming into my shop on a daily basis just to hang out. They just wanted to be around. They wanted the energy. They wanted the vibe. They wanted people who were motivated around them. So I just started letting them. I put a couch in there. I just made it comfortable. I wanted a place. I'm like, man, bring all your friends. I don't care. We'll hang out. We'll talk. If you need a design, let me know. And so I was just, I mean, literally, I, got, I opened my doors there every single day at 8 o'clock, and I was leaving there like 7, 8 o'clock, pulling 12-hour shifts. Uh, and I was just serving all day long. It was so much fun. So if you don't invest in yourself, you won't invest in anyone else. A lot of you guys yesterday made an investment in the, in the course that, uh, and the training that Kane's doing. Props to you guys. That's huge. That's the first step of really making some moves. How many of you guys would love to just spend a day or two with me and actually go through some of the stuff that I did in my business and learn some stuff? Yeah? Well, maybe at the end of the day we'll talk about that. I have a program that we can talk about, but uh, first I want to just wrap this up and kind of share my, my final thoughts. So the three big takeaways is... You gotta keep your business plan simple. Again, don't complicate it. We need clarity. And the less, the more you try to fit in there, the more complicated it's gonna get, the harder it's gonna be to follow that plan. Just keep it simple. How many people are you gonna call a day? What problem are you solving? Who are you solving it for? Who really needs your service? And that's really the, huge, the biggest part. And then creating an irresistible offer. So to sit side by side with somebody and do all this design work and do the printing and do that, and they walk out of there for a $100 bill, that was an irresistible offer. They were paying $150, $200 for just the cards alone. Now they're getting a brand. I was delivering a brand experience. Super important. You've got to build a brand experience. And like I said, relationships are worth more than money. Relationships are the key to my success. That's why I'm here today. For my mentors, the coaches that I've hired, the friends that I've made, the colleagues that i made, the clients that I have, they have propelled me to where I am today, being able to speak here to you guys, share my heart, share my story.